Good morning, brothers and sisters. Kindly stand and join me in the call to worship. Welcome to worship in God's pottery barn. God is the potter creating beauty and through each and one of us. May we in our congregation and our church turn to God and mend in our ways and our actions because God yearns to create us once again in God's own image. We now say the prayer of invocation together. Potter God, you are the artist of all life. Thank you for your creation. Thank you for the ways you continue to work in the world in encouraging, supporting, renewing, and guiding. Still our squirrely minds, help us settle into this time, focused and eager. As we worship you, create in each of us, in our congregation, a willingness to be molded by you, form us once more into true followers of Jesus, the Christ in whose name we pray. Amen. We now sing hymn 467, Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. I'll go to God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before you this morning, dear God, we just want to say thank you, God. 
Thank you, God, for bringing us through the month of August. Thank you, God, for bringing us into your protection, into your love, dear God, into your comfort, into your care. Thank you, Father, for removing us from any harms or dangers, dear God, that we may not know about throughout the month. Thank you for bringing us, dear Heavenly Father, into this month. Thank you for the blessings, God. Thank you for manifesting your love in ways are known to us, dear Heavenly Father, and for continuous protections. God, as we go forward into this month of September, dear God, we ask that you continue to draw us closer to you. We ask that you continue to lift us up, dear God, and to build us. We ask, dear God, that we become true reflections, dear God, of you. That everything we do, everything we think, everything we act, dear God, that it is of you and reflecting our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray, dear God, at this time for comfort, dear God, for those of that may be mourning loss, dear God, or any sufferings. We pray, dear God, and ask that you give us a word, give us a person, dear God. Continue to give us, dear Heavenly Father, hope. And we ask that we commit to this act of worship, dear God, that you remove every distraction at this point in time, dear God, from your sanctuary. We plead the blood of Jesus, dear God, from the roof, dear God, to the foundation. We plead the blood of Jesus, dear God, from the crown of our heads, dear God, to the sole of our feet, to everyone, dear God, in the sanctuary, and to everyone, dear God, in the sound of my voice on social media. And these things we ask, and once again we say thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, brothers and sisters. God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. our Lamb has conquered. Let us follow Would you put your hands together and let's bless the Lord, for this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. For we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of God. It is so good to be back with you. Um, torn between vacation being sweet, but having to report back to work. But I miss you. And it is good to be back with you and pray God's continued blessings on all of you. As I welcome those of you in the sanctuary, we want to say a very special good morning and welcome to those persons who are streaming our service live via Facebook and those persons who are streaming our service live via YouTube. Calvary, let me tell you, I had the privilege of meeting some of the wonderful people who are streaming our services every Sunday. So I want you to put your hands together and celebrate and welcome all our family, friends, members, near and far who continue to watch our Sunday morning broadcast moments of praise. I want to do some special shout outs to a few people. Antoinette McNeil, uh, Yvonne Shepard, Jewel Walcott, Heather Harris, Yvette Paris, Stephanie Edwards, Cicely Edwards, Barbara and Arthur Martin are a few. Um, uh, I want to shout out Aunt Bev because I have to shout out Aunt Bev and Allison. A few of the number of persons who continue to watch who are supporting our ministry here at Calvary. So again, put your hands together as we welcome them. Thank God for them. And for those of you who are streaming, you know that we would invite you to put either in the uh, YouTube chat or the Facebook chat um, greetings, greet somebody, heal them up in the Lord. I want to also extend a very special welcome. He is my batchmate. We journeyed together in the Holy Woods in the... United Theological College of the West Indies. Uh, he is a Baptist pastor, but now he is the president and founder of the Caribbean and African Faith Based Leadership Conference. He's part of the delegation here for the conference happening um, at the Lloyd Erskine, San um, Erskine Sandford Center. Um, I will still call him Reverend because he's a pastor at heart, the Reverend Dr. Agoram. DK, come on, just stand, Brother Agoram. And a little later, he will bring greetings to us. Um, indeed, because we are one family, and we had the privilege of journeying in UTC for four years. Also want to say a very special welcome to uh, Brother Neil, um, Dowden from the Prison Ministries Fellowship. A little later in our service, brothers and sisters, he and family are with us. And indeed, a little later, we will be making a very special presentation to the Prison Ministries Family uh, Fellowship. 
um, that we have always been making every year, and I'll say a bit more about that. But would you put your hands together as you welcome um, him and family? We also have um, present with us the supervisor of the Grace Hill Moravian Preschool, Sister Claire Sargent, and her beautiful daughter, uh, Zane, uh, with us. And again, we'll be making a very special presentation to the Grace Hill Preschool. Would you put your hands together as we welcome her and family in our midst? And so to one and all, I say welcome, 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 and pray God's blessings upon you. We also want to welcome back our church choir, uh, can't wait to hear them. So good to have you back, church choir, after a month's break. And looking forward to your continued ministry in the service of the Lord. We like to celebrate with persons, birthdays, and anniversaries. If you're celebrating your birthday today or throughout this week, we want you to stand. If you are streaming our service live, please put it in the chat, whether it is a birthday or anniversary. We want to remember Sister Madge King, one of our shut-in members, celebrating on the 5th of September. Uh, Brother Matthew Bascom on the 5th, uh, Sister Sheila Chase celebrating on the 6th. I think I saw Sister Sheila. She is upstairs in the church choir, so we want to rejoice with Sister Sheila. Uh, Brother Gladstone Clark celebrating on the 7th. Sister Donna Avita Allman celebrating on the 9th. And as over at Grace Hill, Beverly Highland on the 8th. Barbara Jones on the 9th. And then at Full Neck, Sister Carol Taylor and Tamaya, I understand is upstairs. Tamaya, you're upstairs. All right, good to see you, Tamaya. Your birthday is today. Oh, happy, happy, happy birthday to you. All right, I want a piece of the cake as well. All right, so we are celebrating. So we're going to lift up our voices for our birthday celebrants, after which we take them to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious God, you are the giver of life. You are God. And because you breathe into us life, we celebrate life today. We pray for each of our celebrants, God, that you will renew them, restore them, revive them. We pray for fresh outpouring of your oil, God, upon them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. We ask the almighty God to touch every part of their mortal being cause them to experience healing, peace, joy, and love in the Holy Ghost. We pray, gracious God, that you would grant them the desires of their heart in accordance with your divine will. We pray, Spirit of the living God, that they truly will know it is a joy and privilege to be alive because every day above the grave is a day of thanksgiving. So, Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that from the youngest to the oldest, on their respective days, there will be such gratitude, God, that allows them to commit to serving you and loving you all the remaining days of their lives. And we pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord will lift up the light of his divine countenance upon you. And that God's peace will be with you today, your birthdays, and forevermore. And all God's people say... Brothers and sisters, this is the first Sunday in a new month. I don't know about you, but God was faithful last month. Uh, and the same God that was faithful last month uh, will be faithful this month. Uh, would you stand to your feet with us? Uh, we're going to sing. Uh, we're going to clap. Uh, we're going to make a joyful noise to the Lord. Uh, we're going to celebrate God's goodness. Uh, we're going to magnify the Lord and bless God's name. Uh, for the Lord is good. Uh, His mercy is everlasting. Uh, and God's truth endures to all.
saying, holy is the Lord. Let's lift him up this morning.
We are celebrating a special birthday with Sister Donna this morning. And she has requested the goodness of God. So let us give her our best this morning for her birthday.
Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give God praise. If you know of the goodness of God, if God has been good to you, come on, clap your hands onto God and just thank Him. It's a new month, but new every morning is the love of God. You may be seated in the presence of God. Before we, we go to our scripture readings, I want to, to honor what we do as colleagues in ministry that whenever we visit each other's church, we do get a chance to, to greet the saints with, with short greetings. We know that we are preachers, so we could talk long, but, but we want to. So I want you to help me welcome my colleague and batch mate, the Reverend Agorum DK. Come, Brother Agorum, and just greet the saints with you. Let's put our hands together as we welcome. To the senior servant of this house, the Reverend Adrian Smith, and to all the members and friends of the Calvary Moravian Church here in Barbados, I bring you greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. It's indeed a joy and a privilege to visit Barbados on the occasion of the first African Caribbean Trade and Investment Conference or forum hosted by your Prime Minister. It is my first time to Barbados and I believe it is too long. <laughs> I can recall seeing Adrian, as I would call him in college, for all these years, but he was one of the best congenial, hardworking colleague that we have. And I know that you know more than I do because he have been with you a number of years. You have one of the best pastors in the Caribbean. Let me pause to bring greetings from the Caribbean and African Faith-Based Leadership Conference, which I am currently serving as the president. We are based in Washington, D.C., and our organization is a liaison to the White House Faith-Based Office and the White House Office of Public Engagement. We work closely with 14 cabinet offices to provide benefits, to advocate, and to be a voice for all the 12,000 African and Caribbean churches in the United States. Internationally, we also work with the USAID, Homeland Security, and the State Department to facilitate faith and diplomacy engagement with African and Caribbean pastors in the Caribbean and in Africa, and we hope that we will invite your pastor to the United States to be a part of what we are doing. My task has taken me all over the continent of Africa, Asia, and Europe, wherever African and Caribbean churches are. And we also do outreach to our Islamic brothers and sisters, our African indigenous religions, and others, since they are also the children of God. Amen. I had the distinct pleasure of meeting one-on-one -on -one with your Prime Minister, Mia Motley, and I must say, that she is a gift not only to Barbados, but to the Caribbean and to all the black folks living in the universe. I believe that God's hand is upon her life. We are engaging each other, and we are looking forward to have her as our speaker in our conference next year, our 10th anniversary. So it's a joy to be here. It's a joy to see Barbados. I love it. I went sightseeing yesterday. You have a beautiful country, a beautiful people, a beautiful spirit. I am so exposed to African worship all over the place. 
and I missed my Caribbean worship. And I decided I wanted to be in a place where I can encounter God in a personal way. And since I entered the sanctuary, I must say your praise and worship team is wonderful because indeed I have encountered the presence of the Lord. So before I take my seat, let me encourage you to continue to do your best in the service of God. Continue to fulfill the divine ministry to which God has appointed you. Luke 14, 18 reminds us that the Spirit of the Lord is upon us because he has anointed us to preach good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the year of the Lord's favor, which is a reminder that you are called to an authoritative ministry. You are called to an anointed ministry, and you are called to an apostolic ministry. Do it well. May God bless you, and thanks for having me here. We now have the reading of the Lord's Word, um, Psalms 139, verses 1 to 6, 13 to 18, followed by Jeremiah 18, 1 to 11, by Sister Donna Allman. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm reading from Psalm 139, verses 1 to 6, and then 13 to 18. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. That I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to an end. I am still with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, guys. Good God. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1 to 11. The word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as this potter has done, says the Lord? Just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At one moment, I may declare, 
concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it. But if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will change my mind and the disaster that I intended to bring on it. And at another moment, I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build and plant it. But if it does not, but if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will change my mind about the good that I had intended to do with it. Now, therefore, says the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, thus says the Lord, look, I am a potter shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you. Turn now, all of you, from your evil ways and amend your ways for your doings. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, kindly stand and join us in the hymn of preparation, Bread Thou the Bread of Life. seated. We'll have now the ministering song by the church choir, followed by the prophetic word by the Reverend Dr. Adrian Smith.
Would you put your hands together one more time? Let's bless God. For the church's choir. Um, that's, that's one of the favorites that I have that they sing. Um, and choir, please take note, if, if I never say this ever again, dear Lord and Father of mankind, when I survey the wondrous cause, let all things now live in, hear, O oh Lord, amazing grace, he's everything to me, break thou the bread of life, lift up your hearts, and the glory, the hallelujah chorus, and for unto us a child is born. Wherever they bury me, make sure y'all get those <laughs> songs. I, 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 have, I have that as my list of favorites of what I love y'all singing as anthems. Well, put your hands together and bless God for the Calvary Choir. Amen, amen. We want to thank God for them. Brothers and sisters, it's the first Sunday in September. We have to gather around the table of the Lord in a few moments. I really want to invite you to reflect with me on one verse of scripture. It comes to us from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 18 and verse 4 in particular, we will spend our time reflecting on this one verse, offering to you some reminders from the Lord and a prophetic challenge therein. Jeremiah chapter 18 and verse, verse 4. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel as seemed good to him. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel as seemed good to him. Can I read that one more time for us? The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel as seemed good to him. The word of God for the people of God. Our theme this morning for which I want you to remind your neighbor, you are a work in progress. You are a work in progress. Would you turn to your neighbor and tell them, you are a work in progress. You are a work in progress. Now I need everybody to say it with me. I am a work in progress. Let's go again, church. I am a work. To those of you who are streaming, you can put it up on Facebook as your status, post it to your WhatsApp status. And the Spirit of God reminds all of us today that we are a work in progress. Let us pray. God, I pray that you will speak to us in accents clear and still. Allow the words of my mouth, the reflection and meditation of all our hearts to be acceptable unto you, for God, you are our strength, and God, you are our Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, and the people of God say, Amen. Come with me, brothers and sisters, and let's go back to around 600 B.C. The people of Judah had sinned against God, and God had pronounced judgment. Scholars are in agreement that God wanted them to know that the Babylonians were going to invade their land, cause great destruction, and take them into captivity because they failed to obey the covenant-keeping God. The invasion, according to scholars, was imminent, and people began to feel downhearted because they could sense that something was about to happen. It is in this context that the prophet Jeremiah, called the weeping prophet, offers prophetic words to a people who yet did not understand what God was about to do and through whom and for whom God would have him minister with little or no success. 
I believe, brothers and sisters, we are living at a time in Barbados when everybody has a say about everything. Everybody hears the economists predicting the doom and gloom of the NIS fund and of the financial reality of our nation, Caribbean territories, and the world. Everybody is hearing what the medical personnel are saying about these medical issues and illnesses and terminal sicknesses that we are faced with as a people for which there is little to no hope. I am sure some of you heard the Attorney General talking about crime and violence. And if you listen to the call-in programs, everybody has now become an expert in crime and violence. We have listened and we are hearing what the experts in education have tooted and continue to expose as being the remedy for, yes, our common entrance, but creating children who can function in a world that is ever changing. But I asked us this morning, Calvary, what is God saying? Are we listening to God? Have we heard the voice of God for this next school year? Have we heard what God is saying to the nation of Barbados for the end of the year 2022? Are we listening to what God is saying to you for the next season of your life? I'll stop by to remind the assembly to those on YouTube, Facebook, and to those in this sanctuary that indeed you are a work in progress. So let's go to the potter's house and see and hear what God might be seen. Can I offer you these observations quickly as we approach the table of the Lord? I submit to you, church, that you are a work in progress, firstly, because God has a plan for you. I've stopped by to tell somebody in Calvary that God has a plan for you. I've stopped by to tell somebody who might say, Pastor Adrian, I retired. That's young people word. I've stopped by to tell the retirees that God still has a plan for your life. I've stopped by to tell somebody who figure that the world has given up on them and has abandoned them, that God has a plan for you. Dr. McLachlan, the Bible tells me that the prophet went to the potter's house and God was at the wheel. Oh God, I wish somebody could understand what I'm trying to get you to understand that it does not matter how bad the economies of the world are. It does not matter how bad COVID is affecting the nations of the world. It does not matter how much crime and violence is in the land. God is at the wheel. The potter is still at the wheel. And the vision that the prophet sees is that God is still at the wheel. I've stopped by to tell somebody that God still runs this world. I, I know all that is going on. I, I see and I hear, but I know that God is still in charge. And somebody needs hope this morning uh, to know that it does not matter how much evil may seem to be getting the upper hand God is still in charge. Amen. The Bible says he goes down to the potter's wheel and God is making something. Can I submit to you, Sister Katrina, that what I find interesting about the imagery is that the lump of clay is not just there. But the Bible says, Brother Sheldon, he has taken the lump of clay and he is making something. I want someone to hear me loud and clear. God is making you into something. I know it may not be apparent what it is. I know to a young person who still don't know what career path they want to take, they don't know what it is. I know for somebody who just lost their job, you're trying to figure out, Pastor, what are you saying? I know to somebody who just went through a boat of illness or whatever it is, you're still not sure. But let me tell you, if God is at the wheel, he's making something. And the Bible says that the prophet saw that God was at the wheel and he was making, he was crafting, he was fashioning because God has a plan for your life. And the plan for your life is to make you into somebody. Oh Lord, 
There's something specific that God has for you. There's something defined by the potter. God himself knows what he wants you to be. And the prophet saw that God was taking the clay and he was molding, he was fashioning, he was making the clay into something. Sister Avita, do you know what that means? That there is a future for every one of us. I know sometimes they don't seem so. I know sometimes they don't appear so. I know sometimes there are people who speak into your life and they give you the impression that they're in the future. But let me correct them and correct you this morning. As long as God sits at the wheel, there is a future for your life. He is the potter and I am the clay. He is the potter and you are the clay. And God is molding and God is crafting and God is fashioning because as long as as the potter is at the wheel, something will be made. Amen. Oh, the prophet stopped by, and God is at the wheel. Can I dig deeper, brother Prosper, and share with you that the word for potter is the word from the verb to fashion and to form. It is a, a Hebrew word that we see in Genesis 2-7, when God took man formed man from the dust and breathed into humanity and human beings became living nepeshes or living souls the Hebrew would tell you Pastor Adrian where are you going with this that God is fashioning and God is forming and to somebody who say but pastor all that happening in my life is negative right now that's the fashioning process and that's the forming process because to become something spectacular you gotta go through some fire to become something spectacular you gotta undergo some pressing and some shaping some molding and correcting and if you going through some stuff you got to hold on this morning because the hotter the battle the sweeter the victory will be Hold on, church, because God has a plan for your life. I don't know what that plan is, but I do know that the potter is at the wheel. Can I then tell you, secondly, that you are a work in progress because God has a plan for you. But secondly, you are a work in progress because God can manage the maredness of your life. You are a work in progress because God can manage the maredness of your life. Sister Sandra, the prophet said he saw God at the wheel. But it is his next observation that struck me. He said, in the hand of God was a spoiled piece of clay. In the hand of God was a marred piece of clay. In the hand of God was a messed up piece of clay. And this is the reality, Calvary, that we could be in the hand of God but messed up. We could be in church and broken. We could be in the house of God and our bodies are here, but up to now you don't hear one thing I say because you're still worried about everything that happened. Can I speak the truth and shame the devil? Can I get this church to understand that this is the, the stark reality that in the potter's hand was a broken, messed up, spoiled, marred piece of clay. What does that mean, Sister Claire? That God could handle the mess in our lives. There are some people, as you got a problem, they can drop you like hot cakes and hot potatoes. There are some people who don't want to deal with your issues. But hallelujah, somebody, you got to know that there's a God who prepared to handle whatever mess you got. I, I hear the songwriter says, all I had to offer him was brokenness and strife. But this God, hallelujah, will make something beautiful in his hands. So I, I, this, 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 this sent me researching. In his hands was a marred, messed up piece of clay. 
Every year, Auntie Marlene sometimes tries to take the children to see pottery. And on one of the occasions, I went with them. I observed that the potter, when he noticed that there were defects, blemishes, or something wrong, he would just crush the clay. I noticed that for him, he wanted a vessel of perfection. And this morning, there may be somebody under the sound of my voice, you just say to yourself, Pastor Adrian, I'm coming communion today because I feel messed up in my life. Can I challenge you? But that's the time when you should really come to the Lord's table <laughs> to experience the grace of God that knows no one. In his hand was a broken, messed up piece of clay. And there are days, Calvary, when we feel broken, and messed up. There are days when we don't feel worth it, when we feel worthless. There are times when people make us feel as though we are nothing. Is there somebody in Calvary who's ever experienced it? That no matter what you do, some people make you feel that it's not good enough? No matter how hard you try, you have done your best, given your best, sacrificed your best, and then with flippancy, they dismiss you. With a sense of disdain, they look at you. With a sense of you are nothing, they even sometimes ignore you. But do you observe that God does not throw away the clay? Even though, oh Jesus, <laughs> God does not throw away the clay though it is marred. God does not discard the clay though it is not perfect God does not throw it away but because God has a plan for your life he's going to take the brokenness he's going to take the pain he's going to take the setbacks he's going to take the disappointments he's going to take what nobody else wants to take because what's impossible with man is possible with God God can manage the maredness of your life because when some of us look at some things, they're only good enough to be thrown away. What if God treated us like that? What if as soon as we sin, God just abandoned us? What if as soon as we forget, God said, I ain't got no more time with you? What if God was so flippant and impatient that he was not prepared to journey with us? There's somebody who wants to give up on themselves and God sent me to tell you, don't you dare give up. He is at work in your life. The prophet went down to the potter's house and he saw God was at the wheel. And God was at the wheel and the Bible says that in his hand was a flawed piece of clay. And God had not given up and God does not give up. And whatever it is you are going through, hear this prophetic word, you are still in the hands of God. That's the hope, Sister Jennifer, that you are in the hands of God. Broken as you are, tired as you are, wounded as you are, corrupted as you are, you and I are still in the potter's hands. And isn't that a good place to be, church? Isn't that a good place to be? Because one would think that only, only the self-righteous are in God's hands. Only those who speak in tongues are in God's hands. Only those who can sing better than Pastor Adrian are in God's hands. Only those who go to church every Sunday are in God's hands. Only those who read their Bible every day. But I've stopped by to tell somebody, you may not have read your Bible for the last week. You may not have been to church for the last quarter or year. You are still in the hands of God because God is not finished with you yet. And the potter wants to help you become that which is good, that which is perfect that which is the best because God says you are a work in progress Amen. so how do I end today's sermon by challenging us and reminding us that you are a work in progress God has a plan for your life 
that secondly, God can manage the madness of your life. But third and finally, I got to tell somebody that God can remake you. God can remake you. So listen to the verse again, and let's see if you could connect it as I did. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the pond of the potter, so he made it again another vessel. Let's go to that verse 4 and read it then in the New Revised Standard Version. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand and he reworked it into another vessel as seemed good to him. Look at that last part of verse 4. And he reworked it into another vessel and he refashioned it into another vessel and he remolded it and he reshaped it and he determined that he could make something of those of us who are broken and wounded those of us with blemishes those of us with faults those of us who are imperfect those of us who have messed up over and over again, only God could make us into something new. And that's the hope I give to you today, that God can remake you. I, I, I thought about this, Brother Sheldon, and, and, and this is the truth that struck me. This is the truth that struck me. That it was not a novice who was at the wheel. It was not a trainee who was at the wheel. It was not an intern who was at the wheel. Because you and I know that when we go places and we got to deal with trainees, we, we got a problem. Come on, talk to me. You know that if you go to the doctor's office and you see the interns come around or the hospital, you start to get frightened because you don't want nobody who don't know what it, come on, speak the truth and shame the devil, Calvary. You don't want nobody who, to you, don't seemingly know what they are doing to handle you. Sister Eugene, the Bible tells me that it was not a novice. It was not a trainee. It was not an intern. But the body that was at the wheel has the most experience. And if there's anybody who could figure out what to do with this broken, imperfect lump of clay, it is God himself. So I want to stress again to those of you who didn't get it the first time. You are in the hands of God. And if there's anybody who could help you pick up the pieces, if there's anybody who could forgive you of whatever it is that you did that you think is the worst thing you have done that you can't live with yourself or that people will never forgive you for or that you can't get past, if there's anybody who could help you with that, it is the right person who is at the wheel. It is God himself. But here's what I observed, Sister Margaret, about watching potters and pottery. That the clay has to be pliable. The clay needs to be malleable. And sometimes, brothers and sisters, to do that, you either add water to soften it, or you add clay to strengthen what is the, we call the integrity of the structure, to make it a little bit more firmer. And therefore, as God remakes you, some of you need to soften up a bit. And as God remakes some of you, some of you need to get firm. Let's go again, because you don't hear that. As God remakes some of us, we got to soften the edges. We're a little too rough. Be a little too harsh. Be a little too, and God got a pliable. And for some of us, God got to strengthen us, build us up, make you a little tougher, call you too weak, too frightened, too scared of cat. You got to get some courage, confidence, boldness. Hear the word of God. That the potter is at the wheel, and he's making 
a vessel, and watch the text, that seemed good to him. Come on, church. He's making a vessel that seems good to him. It is not according to what you like. It's not according to what I like. It's not what we think will work. But God will keep us at the wheel till he is satisfied that we are what he wants us to be. So to the person who crying out, past I can't take no more, you got to take it till God finish with you. Because until he's satisfied, he's going to keep crushing and crushing and crushing until he gets the best out of us. God can remake you. And if he's going to remake you, you got to brace yourself for a process where he keeps at you till he gets out some things. When I observe the powder, Brother Gorham, if there are stones, like many stones in the clay, the potter takes them out. If it is that it has not aligned the way he wants it to align, he brings it back down to a level and he comes back up again. And there are some of you who figure that by this time in the year, you should be soaring so, but you don't so because God got to start back that process again. And don't get despondent and don't get discouraged because God's standard is excellence. And God will not let you... Oh, Lord, I wish somebody heard me this morning. He makes a vessel that seems good to him. If it don't seem good to him, he ain't going to make it, Sister Cheryl. A lot of us have become comfortable with mediocrity. We have become complacent with anything and we just dish it out and think that people got to take it. Nobody don't have to take it and God ain't going to take it. He can crush you and remake you till he is satisfied that you are a vessel fit to be called his workmanship. So I stopped by on this first Sunday to tell somebody that God wants to remake you. That there is a work in progress called you. So here's how I close with these two references. The first for those who are the preachers in the house. This is why the common lectionary connects this Psalm 139, which was so ably read by Sister Donna with this Old Testament passage. For it is in Psalm 139, you hear these words. Oh Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar and you search out my path and my lying down. Even before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it completely. Y'all ever heard that before, brothers and sisters? Here the psalmist, where can I go? And where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, God, you are there. Remember I said we are in God's hands. If I make my bed in shoal, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle to the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say surely the darkness shall cover me and the night wraps itself around me, even the darkness is not dark to you, God. And the night is as bright as the day. For it was you who formed my inward parts. Come on, church. It was you who knitted me together in my mother's womb. So here what the psalmist says, Sister Sheldon, I will praise you because I am fearfully and what Wonderful are your works, O Lord. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. But for those of you who didn't get it, here's how I end with perhaps a song that you've heard before but never really thought about it. And if you get a chance today, please go on YouTube and listen to it. It's a song by Tremaine Hawkins. And I use these words to issue this altar call to you. Here's what she sang. In case you have fallen by the wayside of life, dreams and visions shattered, you're all broken inside. 
You don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. The potter wants to put you back. In case your situation has turned upside down and all that you've accomplished is now on the ground, you don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. You know the chorus? The potter wants to put you back together again. And she says, you who are broken, stop by. You who need mending, stop by. Give him the fragments of your broken life. The potter wants to put you back together. And then she says, there's joy in the potter's house. There is peace in the potter's house. There is love in the potter's house. There is salvation in the potter's house. There is healing in the potter's house. There is deliverance in the potter's house. You'll find everything you need in the potter's house. Why? Because the potter wants to put you back together again. Because you are a work in progress. In Jesus' name. And the people of God say. Amen. Bow your heads with me. You are a work in progress. I am a work in progress. Maybe there's somebody here today just feeling broken. Messed up marred, out of shape, out of whack, just not feeling good about yourself. Yet I tell you, the potter wants to mold you. Would you stand in my closing prayer would be for you to somebody who will say today, today, Pastor Adrian, I really don't feel like I am somebody special. I don't feel like I'm somebody worthy. I don't feel as though I'm good or that there's maybe any good in me. The potter wants to put you back. Maybe you're under the sound of my voice, whether you're streaming, and you had all but given up on your dreams and plans because there have been so many setbacks, there have been so many no's, there have been so many closed doors. You have just given up thinking, it ain't going to work. Hear what God's saying. He's at the wheel. Is there somebody who this morning would be pliable, and malleable, and allow God to shape you, to fashion you? We're going to get ready to sing the next hymn, but before we sing the hymn, I, I believe that God sent me this morning to resume this ministry with you, this journey with you. We are works in progress. And if he has not given up on you, you can't give up on yourself. So even if you're streaming, why not just stand where you are in your home, kitchen, wherever it is. Just pause everything for a moment because this point is too serious to miss. That God wants to take you and make something beautiful out of your life. The people around you may not see any good in you, but let me tell you, God sees the good in you. The people around you may not think you would amount to anything or they may say you will never change. But let me tell you, it was impossible with man, is possible with God. So maybe there's somebody here today who needs to go on the potter's wheel and allow God's hands to touch them afresh. Brother Andrew, could you lead us then in that hymn that we have chosen to reflect as we lift up our voices and sing, Spirit of the living God. Fall afresh on me, melt me, mold me, fill me, and use me. And this is our prayer as we ask God to take us at his will and make us into that which he would have us to be. We sing unto the Lord, Spirit of the living God.
us fall afresh. Let's sing that one more time. Spirit of the living God. Spirit. church as we see Andrew, could you play softly while we pray? Gracious God, we come to you this morning as lumps of clay, unshapely, marred, full of blemishes and defects. God, sometimes we are even ashamed of who we are. And God, we confess that there are people who are ashamed of us. We are not good enough. We don't do it well. We are clumbersome and klutzy and we make mistakes. People sometimes see our mistakes and weaknesses more than they can even see our strengths. But God, you are the potter and we are the clay. And this lump of clay is in your hands. God, we know that as clay we could be nothing. But we thank you that you are making something out of us. So Father God, anoint us afresh. And even as we sing, we don't just want these to be words of a song, but they are our prayer words. Melt us. Mold us into the people that you would want us to be. Shape us, God. And then God, fill us with what we need to get through each and every day. Fill us with the grace and the love and the wisdom and the discernment and the peace and the joy and the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit so that we could live pleasing in your sight. God, we come to you empty. And like the woman at the well, we say, fill us up, God, till we want no more. Father God, do not stop the wheel until you are satisfied. God, we know that we are not perfect and we don't need anybody to tell us that. But we will not dwell in our imperfection. But we will bask in the love of God. So Father God, I pray that you would hear the cries and the prayers of those who are standing in this sanctuary and on the virtual platform. I pray, gracious God, that those who this morning had given up on themselves and there's somebody streaming this service who just happened to tune into this broadcast. God had ordained you to hear this word. You are a work in progress. And I speak that into the atmosphere that God is not finished with you yet. There is better to come out of you. There is more to come out of you. There is greater still that will come from you because he's remaking you into a vessel of honor. A vessel of glory his workmanship for we are the light of the earth the salt of this world we are God's workmanship so may the Spirit of God rest in you may the Spirit of God anoint you may the Spirit of God fill you and may you endure this molding process because we got to believe that God is doing it out of love till he is satisfied with us. 
In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God say, put your hands together and bless the Lord, will you with me? Come on, let's just bless God. Let's give God a wave. Just thank him. Thank him for what he's doing in your life. And know that he is not finished with you yet. We're going to respond by giving God our best offering as we can this morning. There shall be showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops around us are falling. The ushers are going to wait on us. And once they have collected the offering, can you stand with me as we just sing this? Because I do believe that we got to thank God for every blessing that we have. We are collecting two offerings this morning. The first is our regular tithes and offerings. And the second goes towards what we're trying to do in terms of renovations and refurbishment. We have started the process. We've had a number of setbacks. But I know that God isn't finished with us yet. And he who began a good work will see it to completion. So let's give God our best offering. Whatever God has laid on your heart. So the uh, ushers are coming through. When you see the little children coming around, that's the Sunday school offering. For those who are passionate about Sunday school, supporting the Sunday school and supporting the teaching ministry of our church. We're going to give unto Almighty God. Uh, Reverend Dr. Marani, folks, Griffith, can I ask you to come downstairs, please? Uh, during the singing of this hymn as well. Thank you very much. So let's worship God through the act of offering. There shall be showers of Showers of blessing, they are showers of blessing, and mercy comes from the
Let us bow our heads in prayer. We are praying the prayer of thanksgiving. As together we thank God for his goodness to us. And so together we pray, loving God, for the challenge of hard teachings. Help us continue to grow in our faith and in our understanding that we might be ever growing disciples of Jesus Christ. Thank you too for this opportunity to share our gifts, inspire us to look realistically at the abundance we have and the needs of the world, so we might take daily steps to move more in line with the reality of standing out from the crowd and standing up as true disciples, followers of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Brothers and sisters, here at the Calvary Moravian Church, we have been committed to giving and committed to doing missions. One of the areas of missions which we commit to every year is the area of blessing children with school supplies and in more recent times, backpacks as a way of getting them ready for school. Those of you who are parents know that back to school could be sometimes a frustrating, worrying experience. We have witnessed and seen the costs of school supplies rise astronomically in some cases. And when we begin to think of single parents, and when we begin to think of parents with two, three, or more children, it becomes daunting. Over the last couple of years, the Board of Stewards have joined with me in the vision that we must not only give to our own children here at Calvary, but we must give to children who are in need. And we have partnered with the Prison Ministries Fellowship, Prison, Prison Fellowship Barbados. We have partnered with them every year to bless them with some amount of backpacks. And I'm going to invite uh, Brother Doin to come at this time. He will receive on behalf of the fellowship and I'll also ask him to bring a few words or greetings and to share with us a little bit more about it. But I'm going to invite him to come forward at this time. And Calvary, I want to let you know based on those of you on island who have given, I traveled and there were people who drove like an hour and a half to meet me to give me school supplies and money for this program. I want to share with you that we are going to present in this first instance 15 backpacks with school supplies to the Prison Ministries Fellowship. All right? And I honestly, come on, you could do much better than that. I, I want to thank you because it is your giving and generosity that has made this um, special. Uh, Brother Delroy, you are associate pastor. Could you come, please? I'm going to ask you to make this presentation. Um, as Sister Sanjini will just present a, a sample. We can't give Brother Doing all 15 in his hands. He, he can manage, I think, but no, we won't do that to him. But we'll just symbolically present this first one. Then I'll ask him to come and to, to bring greetings. Um, so you'll go that side, and Brother Delroy will do the actual presentation. Um, on behalf of uh, myself and Brother Delroy, Associate Pastor, on behalf of the Board of Stewards and Board of Elders here at Calvary and the entire Calvary Moravian Church, we want to present this, these bags, backpacks to you 
um, that the children will be blessed and that they will know that there's some body out there who cares enough for them. Would you put your hands together as we make this presentation? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's a wonderful privilege to be fellowshipping with you today. Um, we've been partnering with you for years, and this is the first time. Others came, but today is the first time I'm here. And I want to thank God for you. Amen? It's always good to, as Pastor said, to give back. And Prison Fellowship, for the last 40 years, We've been trying to give back to inmates and ex-inmates and their children. One of the things that we recognize is that when somebody goes to prison, he doesn't only go to prison, but his whole family suffers. And we've got, right now we're in the middle of our back to school drive, and we have this year had 600 children on our register. Bearing in mind that we've got over 900 men in Glen in um, Dodds. So it tells us the, the effect that it has on the children. But I want to thank God that organizations like Calvary seem it fit to bless the children of those inmates who did nothing wrong, but because of choices made by parents, have to suffer. So I want us to continue to pray for them. Because we, we at Prison Fellowship want to show them that there's another way. Amen? Amen? We talk about the problems in our society, but it starts with showing the children that there's a different way. You don't have to take the same way your father took or your mom took. So I want to thank you on behalf of the board and members of Prison Fellowship Barbados for your ongoing support. And I just want to mention that you don't only support us in backpack. Whenever we call on our pastor, he's always willing to help. So I want you to give yourselves a round of applause. And I want to remind us that when we give to the poor, we're lending to God. And God is a good paymaster. God bless you. Amen. We here at Calvary remain committed that we will support education. Um, so I want you to know that we are committed to the Grace Hill Moravian Preschool. It belongs to us. Somebody say it belongs to us. Belongs to Come on, no, no, I didn't hear you. Somebody say it belongs to us. Belongs to us. And if it belongs to us, we have to support the preschool, not just by words, but in all the tangible ways that we will. This morning, I want to invite the supervisor of the Grace Hill Moravian Preschool, Sister Claire Sargent, to come. We are going to make a presentation. I ask both boards, well, some people like Leanne and so will say, well, I just made the demand and anyhow, but let's not go there. But I shared it with both boards. So the presentation that we're making to Grace Hill is on behalf of Grace Hill Moravian Church, who also has joined in the Backpack Initiative and Calvary. And we're going to present Sister Sergeant with four backpacks to give to four needy uh, children of the preschool. And as I said, this is just a start because there are a number of persons we are trying to help and we know how we got to try to help. So would you put your hands together um, as we just present to Sister Sargent. Again, it doesn't stop here at Calvary. It doesn't stop here at all. Because we have to keep giving and giving and giving. One of the things we do, and the reason that I have brought this forward, is that 
sometimes parents need to know what they have so they know what they need to get. So we're trying to get these backpacks out a little earlier. I want to thank those of you who know that we would often do this on Back to School Sunday, but we've brought it forward so that we could try to help some parents. And one of the things we do is that we reward and celebrate with the children of our congregation who uh, would have done the common entrance. And this morning, we want to celebrate with Sister Jamie uh, Lee. I think Sister Jamie is here. Come, Sister Jamie. Let's put our hands together. She was successful as she did her common entrance. Final set of presentations, if they are here, we don't have everybody. And as I said, some members call and say, Rev, I know you're running late. Could I still bring school supplies and stuff next week? I said, the answer is yes. So we, this not stopping here. But we wanted to start to get some out. So there are a couple of children who are here. I'm going to ask you to come quickly. And Sanjina will present them to you quickly as we come. Mario, could you please come? Um, Jelano, Jelani, come. Maya, come. Shakia, come. Come, Andy Sanjina got something for you. Oops, watch it, watch it, watch it. All right, so we give giving you on Jelani. Remember to say thank you, Jelani. All right, good. You can go back to your seat. Jelano, we have Mario. We have Maya, come Maya, come Shakia. Take for your sister as well, Mario. Maya. Shakia, all right, so this is just some. All right, thank you very much. Let's put our hands together for some of the children that we want to make sure. And please remember, oh, they're here? <laughs> no, I don't see them. All right, so these are some. The others are going to get, um, I see you, Zane. I see you. The others will get, but I want to encourage persons, you can still bring your contributions to the office uh, during the course of this week, because we do have a few more that we want to give out, and a few other children that we want to help as best as is possible. This next presentation I make is because the Word of God says to everything there is a season and a purpose on the heaven. And the only constant in life is change. This lady has been passionate, passionate, passionate about Vocation Bible School. And when I came to Calvary in 2013 and we had our discussion and we looked at this six weeks concept and people thought we were mad, she was one of the voices that said, yes, Rev, we could do it. She journeyed with me as we went through the transitions of ordering material and then eventually to writing and producing our own material. She has served in the capacity of VBS director, but the truth be called, chief cook and bottle washer. Some years, she is here before seven to the point where she has to get breakfast. And I'm here telling her all she business now, so y'all can know it now. And then, like myself, she is the last to leave until parents, some who remember and deliberately have left them in our care, and some who have forgotten are taken from this compound. Life is about transitions, and as senior pastor, I have challenged us that there has to be a succession plan. We are going to be restructuring the Calvary Moravian Church VBS program next year. But I wanted to take this opportunity to publicly and on your behalf express our deepest 
gratitude and thanks to Dr. Marlene Folks Griffith for her dedicated, committed, unwavering support to Vivation Bible School. Dr. Marlene, could you kindly come forward, please? Sister Marlene, I heard too when you said this was the last, but I also saw a 